My name is Addison Elliott, and today I have the privilege of introducing Abby Rothrock. I first knew Abby as a girl on Woodland's middle school cross country team. She was the fastest girl at every meet and ran with a blonde, curly bun right on top of her head. Thankfully, Abby chose to come to St. Mary's after her Woodland years, and I quickly came to know her the summer before freshman year at our cross country practices. On the first day of practice, Abby confidently walked up to me, us being total strangers, and said, I love the color of your shorts. This is just one example of Abby's kind and outgoing personality that has stayed with her throughout high school. In addition to this, Abby is supportive, intentional, adventurous, and an overall joy who keeps everyone in our grade laughing. A few weeks ago in calculus, Mr. Stone asked her to Google a picture of Luke Kennard. Quickly convinced that his name was Luke Kennard Headshot, she was given the nickname Headshot. I cannot wait to hear what Abby has to share with us today, so please join me in welcoming the Woodland Cross Country legend, our very own MUS cheerleader, Headshot, and the Latin scholar herself, Abigail Roan Rothrock. I am not a morning person. In fact, it's one of the first things people learn about me after sleepovers. Frequently, by the time I wake up, my friends have gone to their respective sports practices, showered, had breakfast, and on special occasions, even taken naps. Because of my inability to wake up earlier than the 10 minutes required of me to get ready for any event, I never have time to do my hair. Because my hair is curly, I have to brush it while it is wet or else it'll turn into a frizzy mess. So my hair is usually thrown into a bun on the top of my head besides the rare occasions where I manage not to snooze my alarm four times and make it to the shower to condition and brush my hair before school starts. Because of the amount of preparation it takes for me to make my hair look good, I've run into many issues, one of which includes cheer. I'm a cheerleader for the MUS basketball team and for basketball games we rotate hairstyles. Ponytail, half up, half down, braids, and almost anything else you can think of. The issue arose when we were assigned half up, half down. Due to my tight schedule, if I, thought, or if I was told or thought the hairstyle would be half up, half down for the game that night, I had to shower and brush my hair before school started. However, on many occasions, we were not told the assigned hairstyle or it was changed an hour before the game. When this happened, I would not have time to brush my hair and try to make it look good, resulting in the frizzy mess that I'm sure some of you have seen. As well as this, my curls sometimes take on weird curl patterns and turn into what my family likes to call a rat's nest. <laughs> I have also earned many nicknames from my friends surrounding my hair, including Curly Fry, Shirley Temple, and Weird Barbie. <laughs> because of all these difficulties, over the years, I slowly learned to hate my hair. I hated how my friends didn't have to do anything to their hair in order to wear it down, I hated that I had to buy expensive curl shampoo and conditioner, and I hated that 90% of the time, I thought my hair looked bad. Because of this, I began to straighten my hair for most events, like dances, trips, and going out with my friends. However, it quickly became clear to me and many others that I did not know how to straighten my hair. Usually, after I attempted to turn my curls pen straight, I ended up with half straight, half curly hair. Although, one day, after truly straightening my hair, I called one of my moon dance friends, Skye, and asked her if she thought I looked better with straight or curly hair. To my surprise, she said curly. I always assumed that because of people's friendly teasing, they, that they thought my hair was as messy as I did. After this interaction, I began to ask the question often, and again, to my surprise, almost everyone said they liked my hair when it was curly more than when it was straight. Upon these encounters, I realized that I was the only one truly looking down on my hair. The friendly teasing I received was partially due to the fact that I made fun of my hair myself and most of the time gave up on trying to make it look good. The compliments I were given were friendly and people didn't see the little faults in it that I did. At one point, my best friend Mary Porter even told me that my hair was like my personality, bubbly and fun. Her words helped me realize that my hair was something that people associated positively with me, not negatively. I've now learned to love my hair. I no longer feel embarrassed when my hair is in a bun or a messy ponytail, but instead I'm now able to laugh at myself for it. While I sometimes still straighten my hair, I do it for myself when I need a small change and not for how others might view it. However, now I do know that when I want my hair to stay straight, I have to enlist my hairdresser or cousin Glen Archil to do it for me. To my mostly straight-haired class of 2025, thank you for seeing me through my worst and through my best. I'm so glad I've gotten to know all 72 of y'all's smiles, and I wouldn't be the person I am today without you. I can't wait to see all the places you will go. Thank you.